Hey you guys, this is David Jaffe, the co-director and co-designer uh, of the new Twisted Metal on PlayStation 3 from this year. Uh, well, let's see. I promised Ryan uh, at Giant Bomb that I would give you guys a top 10, uh, and this is very, very late. I apologize. Uh, it's been a really wonderful and busy uh, holiday season around here, and uh, getting a new game, new studio off the ground, and I just haven't had the time, and I apologize. But I did want to get it to him, um, and to people at, at, at Giant Bomb, uh, thanks for waiting on me. I, I'm, I'm really sorry for being so late. So anyway, a uh, couple caveats here, which I'm sure you, you've seen from a number of developers. You know, I don't play as many games as I wish I could. I play everything, but I don't spend the time with all of them uh, that I want to. I don't finish most games. Um, and so coming to me and saying, hey, what's your top 10? You know, know that. I have not played everything yet. I will be playing most everything. Uh, you know, I'm on the uh, the Dice Awards uh, nominating committee for Best Game Direction. And so I, I, I still have spent too little time with Dishonored and XCOM and uh, you know, Mass Effect 3 to have a great opinion on those games yet, although clearly I like them very much. But you won't see games like that on my top 10, not like that, but you won't see certain games like end of the year games, Assassin's Creed 3, that I just haven't gotten around to really playing enough to have that kind of an opinion yet. So know that. Number two, uh, I got to give some honorable mentions of where a lot of my time has been going gaming this year. So I played a lot of Torchlight 1, uh, which I know has nothing to do with 2012, but I got it on the Steam sale and I was addicted to it for like two months. Uh, I'm looking at a list over here. Uh, Rayman on Vita, I've been playing, um, which I guess is new, it's it's Origins, but from last year, which was a top 10 game for me, and playing it on the Vita is just so good. I love playing it on my Vita. Uh, I've been playing Stratego, the board game, right? So that's where a lot of my gaming time has been going, uh, you know, this year. But also, obviously, I'm playing the new stuff as well. So here is my top 10 list, uh, 2012, um, in order. So number 12 which I know it's 12, right? So start at 10, but I got to give you 12 because these are the ones that, <clears throat> you know, popped up in my head. So 12 uh, was Brave Temple Run. I spent more time with that game. Uh, I wouldn't say more time on my iOS uh, or my pad and my uh, phone, but loved it. Fantastic. I loved the original Temple Run. I thought Brave was a great movie, great license, uh, mechanic connection, and there you go. So that's number 12. It was just fun, just really, really fun and well-made, and I enjoyed it. Um... Sound Shapes is number 11. Um, I, 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 I was really into Sound Shapes for about two weeks there. I started building some levels, uh, never uploaded anything, didn't like any of them good, uh, well enough to upload. But I just thought it was a really fun platformer. It was really creative. It was really interesting. And I thought um, it was cool. It was really good. Um, sound Shapes. So Sound Shapes is number 11. Uh, 10 is FTL. Um, I It would be higher if my brain was better at it. I've never been good at sort of, um, I, I love strategy games. I tend to like turn-based strategy games. I know you can pause it, um, <clears throat> but for some reason it just, too many things are happening too quickly for me to really feel that I'm able to, you know, make the decisions as wisely as I want to. But I, I loved that game. I loved that it was pure mechanics, um, that it was, um, even if you strip away the fact that I, you know, I love the business model of it, I love the cost of it, I love the fact that gamers have flocked to it, um, and, and proven that great play and great mechanics will, uh, you know, be a compelling proposition if priced right. I love all those aspects, but as a core game, space exploration, naming your crew, naming your ship, it feels, it almost felt like one of those old Apple II, you know, was like lemonade stand in space, which makes no sense for probably 99% of you watching this, but FTL I thought was just a really fun playing, uh, really cool game. Number eight, no, sorry, number nine uh, is McPixel, which again is like, what the fuck, right? But it was just, <coughs> I think a lot of these that you'll see, uh, this is my Christmas cough, I'm sorry. <coughs> well, I'm going to do it anyway. <coughs> a lot of these that you'll see, um, and now I'm sitting here going, hey, I was on the Giant Bomb thing at E3, and I think I wore the same fucking shirt. I swear I uh, own more than like three shirts, but um, not many more. I don't shop a lot, really. But anyway, why are you here to hear my top ten, right? So... Big Pixel, right? Number nine. Um, you know, again, I mean, it's not like, you know, it's not like, you know, Uncharted or something or God of War or Gears of War. It's not like some, you know, epic or anything. But it just, it was refreshing. And I think a lot of the stuff that you'll see coming up on my list, it, it, it was more about really appreciating the interactive experience when it was it was done, it, it, when it was being played with, when it was being pushed, when it was being experimented with. And I thought Big Pixel was just... Um, really fresh that way and really interesting and it, it, it um, you know, absolutely had, you know, me engaged. I, you know, I loved the, uh, the, 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 
what's the word? I loved the structure of it. I loved how it's like, ah, oh, you fucked up a puzzle, you went to the next one. You were dying to get back to that submarine puzzle to figure out how to not make it explode, you know? And I, I just thought it was a really neat game and, and really creative. So McPixel's 9. 8 is Journey. <clears throat> I had a really, um, I, you know, Flower was probably my top, in my top three to five games of all time, not just of the year when it came out. F Journey, uh, you know, I told uh, Genova Chen, the designer uh, and director of it, this, I was hanging out with him last, last month, and we were talking and I said, you know, it was weird. I said, Journey, I love the world of Journey. But the gameplay, I said, was actually much more typical, uh, you know, compared to other that game company games. And I'll let him, if he decides publicly, he had very fascinating uh, response to that, which he's always interesting to talk to about game design and mechanics. But, um, but Journey as a world, I thought the world was so well realized and the vision was so well realized that even though the game underneath it, I thought, was just, you know, solid and cool. Uh, the world was so great and so amazing, and I, I hope that game company or Sony or, or Mix or whoever wants to do something with it really runs with that universe. I think there's so much more they could do there, and I, and I hope they do. So Journey is 8. 7 is Song Pop, which I just thought was really fucking fun. I played it with my friends and my kids and strangers on the internet. Uh, it's Obviously, it's named that tune. I love pop music. I have kids, and so I'm... You know, I Taylor Swift, Carly Rae Jepsen, Jay Z. I mean, I, I. It's not like these are. You know, when you have kids, you don't. You know, a lot of people say, "Oh, well, you know, what, all I like listen to is what I listen to in high school," and then I don't listen to new music. Um, I don't have uh, quality musical taste, but I, I love top forty music, and so song pop was great for me, and I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, six uh, was Halo Four multiplayer. I haven't even touched the single player yet, so that could be you know, rise it higher as a package, but I, uh, multiplayer shooting is usually too chaotic for me. I don't mean it's too chaotic, like, oh, it's too loud, I'm too old, but it, it's, it's, it's too fast from a standpoint of I can't read and recognize the enemies, uh, things come from all directions, death comes too quick, and I don't mean that as a complaint, like, oh, I wish I was better, I mean just the pacing and the cadence uh, of most shooters, I, I find, uh, it's not conducive to really engage in your brain at a tactical level. And I think Halo has always, and 4 does it brilliantly, <clears throat> really kind of allows you that mental space um, to be with the scenarios and form relationships with the people you're fighting against and have comebacks and uh, really stay alive long enough uh, if you're good, not even great, but just good enough that you're using sort of the skills they give you. Uh, to exploit, uh, that it just really engaged me uh, more than any other, you know, sort of traditional multiplayer this year. So I would say Halo 4 is 6. 5 is another Vita game. I'm not, I'm not here hawking Vita. I'm not working on a Vita game. I don't make any money off Vita. And I, you know, I'm not a believer in dedicated handhelds. I like them, but I just think the, the phones and the other apps that I, I just think these are becoming more and more niche. But I love my Vita and, uh, I thought Tales from Space, uh, Mutant Blobs uh, Attack, which, you know, Shuhei Yoshida, who runs Sony Development, uh, had been tweeting about this game for, for six, seven months, I think. And I was like, yeah, whatever. What? I, I, I don't know. I just never had any interest in it. It just didn't look like something I wanted to play. Uh, and I'll tell you what, I, this is probably <clears throat> pushing it. But I, it, when I was playing it, I was when I finally played it, I think Sony put it on sale or something, and I was like, ah, or it was the PSN thing, so I'm free. I am getting it anyway because I'm a PS Plus member. And it, it really f feels to me like it's some of the best, you know, side-scrolling platforming since Yoshi's Island, which I know is like, are you kidding? Maybe it isn't that good. Maybe, you know. But when I was playing it, it felt that way. It's really creative level design, really creative, you know, use of their mechanics. Um, you know, I love the, the, the setting of college and all this cool stuff happening in the background and the humor. I thought it was great. So that's five. Four is Draw Something, um, which I'm pretty sure came out this year, um, at the beginning of the year. Um, or at least that's when I played it. I just thought that was um, great. What a fun, social, creative, uh, addictive game. It, you know, it burned really quick. After about two or three weeks, I was done with it. But what a, you know, I'm sorry, I'm drinking Diet Coke this morning, so I'm, you know, kind of burpy, sorry. Um, but anyway, yeah, so Draw Something I thought was great, just a lot of fun. Three, um, probably the most, not, not the most, but one of the most fun games I, I, I had playing this year uh, was Sonic Racing Transformed. I just thought it was so good. Such a, I haven't played a fun arcade racer like that in years, and it's just addictive and great controls. I played it on consoles, so I hear on the handhelds it's not as, you know, uh, uh, fast, you know, feeling. And, and, but, but the console version that I played, the PS3 version, Fantastic. So that that was number three. Number two and one I struggle with, but number two I would say uh, is is I think it's I get I think it's ten million, not a million. It's ten million, which is the the iOS game, which I just thought was, uh, and uh, 
a, uh, a, a match three game. And I usually don't even like match three games, but this I couldn't stop playing. This was fantastic. Great pure mechanics, simple graphics, look like a Commodore 64 game. But again, that's what I love about games is that when you find the essence of the medium, which is interactivity, and someone does it so well, um, it's just, it blows you away. And it was just a great, great game. One of my favorite games of all time is, is 10 million now. And the number one game, I was saying to this uh, last night uh, to the producer uh, uh, of our new title, or one of the producers of our new title, and I said, um, uh, I said, this is probably, you know, shave off about 30, 25, 30 percent of this for, for hyperbole, right? But my number one game, I said to him, I said, there's, there's great truth when I say that this game does for uh, video game storytelling. It's not as popular by any means, but I think in the long run, uh, it, 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 it does for video game storytelling what Pulp Fiction did for movie language. And I, and again, that's 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 pushing it. That's hyperbole. But there's there's a, there's a large grain of truth there. Where uh, my number one game is Thirty Flights of Loving, which everything from its uh, short form gameplay, which I think in the future will not be short form. It will be maybe a little short form, but it, I think most games are moving towards at least story based games. I think the way they do jump cuts, the way they sort of cut out the boring parts, the way they um, you know uh, play with time in that game. I think the fact that it really is a game about other things other than running around and shooting. I mean, they, it's, it's not like the world's best mechanics, but I, I think there's something about being in that space, even though the graphics are extremely rudimentary. Uh, it just really, uh, there's something very fresh and innovative and something very forward thinking about that game. And it's very inspiring to me. And uh, I think 10 million was the most fun game I had this year. Uh, fun, fun I had with the game this year. And I think 30 Flights is absolutely the most... Um, uh, forward-thinking and fresh and interesting and important game of the year. I think a lot of people would say Journey fits into that. And I think, like I said, Journey as a world is beautifully realized and deserves a space on every top ten list. Um, but I think the real important, the real artistic, the real, not that that wasn't important or artistic, but the, the, the most artistic, the most independent, and the most relevant game of the entire medium this year is, is, is to me, 30 Flights of Loving uh, for all those reasons. Um, so anyway, so that's that's my list. It's running long, as all my shit does. I apologize. Um, I got to go to work, and then I'm going to have New Year's. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope you guys have had a great holiday. I hope you have a great time tonight, and you're safe, and you have a great, uh, awesome 2013. And uh, thank you for watching this long, rambling video. And Giant Bomb, again, thank you for all the support over the years that you guys have been around. I want to say years, like... You're still relatively new, but it doesn't seem like it. It seems like you've been around forever. Um, and then, um, oh, come on. I'm doing a video for Giant Bomb. Say hi, Giant Bomb. Uh, what is that? That's a website. That's one of the biggest game websites in the world. You're on the internet. What are you playing? Oh, okay. What are you playing? Tell the, pe tell the fine folks what you're playing. I am playing. Hey. Is this your number one game of the year? Yes. What is it? Minecraft. Mine Do Minecraft. No, wait a minute. Now, that's what about this? This is not your number one game of the year? No. What the? See what I have to deal with? See what I have to deal with, people? Ha say Happy New Year to the nice folks. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, people. Talk to you soon. See you, Giant Bomb. Thank I you, Giant Bomb. I am seven. This is great news. Breaking news, folks. See ya. Bye.